Blitz on 2 starts now. Yes, it does. Hello, hello, good evening. Welcome in, my Dan Fanning. Welcome into week seven edition of the Blitz on 2. A little chill in the air tonight as it's starting to feel like football weather. We begin tonight with a monumental matchup in the skeezer rank. Six and one Porter Gowd traveling to take on seven and oh Northwood Academy. We pick things up at halftime. It is Porter. They lead 14 12. A rock fight the rest of the contest. Nolan Schumann airing it out. Picked off by MJ Davis. He was going for Greer Hyatt. Northwood Academy takes over. Fourth quarter we go. Porter Gal gets one right back. JJ Flood, the running back, playing some defense as well. He shows off the running back skills right here. A nice return by number four. Gets to about midfield. Porter Gal will go on to score one more time in the fourth quarter as Porter up ends Northwood Academy for the first time this evening. Porter Gal goes on to win by your final score. PG 28. I guess they scored twice. PG 28, Northwood Academy 12. Now to the high school ranks like Northwood, Somerville entered the evening still undefeated. Green Wave taking their talents to the backyard to tangle with the Trojans of James Island. Scoreless after one quarter of play. Second stanza we go. Third and 20 for J.I. Connor Dantzler a little crosser to Jalen Brown Singleton. Speedy races for the sticks, gets tackled out of bounds, but he gets just enough for the first down. Later in the drive, another third and long dancer wrapped up at the line of scrimmage by Cavus Brown. James Island forced to punt. Ensuing green wave drive, third and medium for Jaden Cummings and the O. Handoff to Javen Williams, the sophomore, up the gut. Nice tackle by Sammy McKelvey, but Javen moves the chains. Later in the drive, fourth and five, Coach Rapp goes for it. Friend of the program, Cummings, on the crosser of his own to El Presidente. Keyshawn Washington races for a first down inside the Trojans' 10. A few plays later, Javen is called upon again. The sophomore continues his outstanding season. He scoots in for the opening salvo. Somerville leads seven zip. That was at halftime. We go to your final score, the green wave. Blank James Island, 26 0, your final score. Elsewhere in Region 8, Class 5A, 4D hosting West Ashley at Bagwell Stadium. Kevin Johnson airs it out deep, but it is picked off by Jalen Capers. Nicely done for the West Ashley offense. Ruck Smith, he is picked off by Jordan Wright. Wright steps in front of the pass. Looks like he's going back in for the score. Touchdown, Patriots. However, a hold is called an illegal hold for D's offense. They go to work. Johnson deep to Anthony Williams. Anthony gets down inside the five. Then Banks Wickersham is in. He fumbles the rock. Wow, looks like he might score. He gets top stopped. Wildcats take over. From there, Ryan Campbell goes to work. Zero bounces it to the outside down the West Ashley sideline. He is finally knocked out of bounds inside the red zone. A few plays later, as we go to the fourth quarter, Campbell, he is in. PAT no good. That makes it 21-20. West Ashley leading by a point. Then, if some Ryan Campbell is good, more is better. Ryan first through a hole, and it is good night, Irene. Agent Zero strolls in as 4D takes their first lead of the night. They go on to win by 13-34-21. The third contest in Region 8, Class 5A AR visiting Stahl. Swamp Foxes get the ball first. Trevor Kalis trying to find an open man. He cannot. He decides to tuck and run a nifty 20-yard scamper and a first down for the Foxes. Next play, handoff to the home run hitter. That is Jaden Acosta. He finds a running lane and hits one out of the park. Give him six. Ashley Ridge leads 7-0, just 30 ticks in. Stahl's first drive, watch out from behind. Mario Pringle off the edge for the sack. Ball comes out, but after the tackle, a safety. AR leads 9-0. Ensuing Fox's drive inside the Stahl 30. Kalis out wide at Jagger. Spivey 1-5 has moves like Jagger. Gets inside the Warriors 2. First and goal, Ashley Ridge. From there, handoff to Acosta, and he will not be denied. His second tutty. Of the quarter, it makes it 16 zip visitor. Chris, your Warriors going tonight to get blanked by 72. AR wins big this evening.
Staying in Class 5A, but moving over to Region 7. Goose Creek had dominated the region the last half decade. Till last year, when Stratford won it all. Gators trying to get back on top this season. And Goose Creek up the road in Monk's Corner tonight, taking on Berkeley. Wow, look at the stacks coming out. Opening kickoff right here. Speaking of looking at the stacks coming out, Jehovah Williams takes it about the 20, finds a running lane, then it rumbles all the way down inside the Goose Creek 30-yard line. From there, Henry Rivers to Javaris Sumter, one of his many targets on the outside. Javaris catches the rock, touchdown stags. They lead 7 Nothing. Gators would respond. Watch this. Come on, E. Clary. Play action to Jalen Grant. Jalen is wide open and he is good. Good God. How about that? PAT no good, though. Stags lead 7 6. Not many scores from there as Goose Creek moves to 2 0 in region play. A big win on the road this evening. Gators 13, Stags 10. Stratford hosting Lucy Beckham at Ray Stackley Field. 7-7 ball game when we get there. Jaken Davis plunges into the end zone right there behind his O-line. Stratford goes up 14-7. Ensuing kickoff. Watch this lick right here on Aiden Lynch. Lynch, the ball carrier, loses the rock. Then he gets rocked. But Aiden would be okay. Aiden would be okay. Long pass from Chalmers Ballard right here to Aiden Lynch. He gets behind the defense. Looks like he could. Go all the finally trip down inside the 30 yard line later in the second quarter. Chalmers Ballard, a QB keeper. He does this thing like he's done all season. He strolls in for the touchdown that ties things at 14. As we go to your final score, both teams putting a dent in the scoreboard tonight as Stratford holds on to win by four, 42 38. Your final score. Back east of the Cooper, Wando hosting Kane Bay. Cobra, second week in a row in Mount P. 13-7, a buck 30 left in the first quarter. Speaking of kickoffs, watch this. Kane Bay kickoff to Michael Jenkins here on the return. Like the Mikey Jenkins of old, Jenkins a big return past midfield. Then the QB would air it out. He finds Kai Korea on the sideline. Cobra, Kai hauls it in for the first down. Warriors later in the drive. Jenkins in the Wildcat. Kiss and hug the ones you love, like E-Man used to say, touchdown Warriors. Coach Perrin decides to go for two stone all day in the pocket to throw. Finally finds my client, Brock Feinberg, in the end zone for the conversion. Brock smash. That makes it 21-7. Ensuing Cobra's drive, Colby LaRocca over the middle to Griffin Byers. It takes several Garnet jersey to finally get Griffin down. Then LaRocca on the option pitch to Corin Hoop. Zero, a big gain down the Cane Bay sidelines. That gets the Cobras up inside the Wando red zone. A few plays later, Corin's number is called again. He gets loose into the second level and give him six. Hoop finds pay dirt to make it 21-14 ball game. As we go to your final score, Wando, they go on to win by seven, 28-21 is your final score. And we're just getting started here on the Blitz on two when we return. Can Bishop England keep it rolling as they face a 5-0 May River squad this evening? Find out when we come right back. And welcome back into the Blitz on two. Another matchup tonight of a team with only one loss, Bishop England, taking on an undefeated squad in May River to Jack Candy Stadium. We go Bishop's down 21 nothing at halftime. Quinn Mahoney and the Bishop O looking to get things going a little reverse right here by Zachary Balag. A first down finally goes down. Nice run there by number two. Then later, Mahoney, little swing pass out to Balag. Those two have had quite the connection this year. Zach making moves, finally gets down inside the, I guess maybe the midfield, but they turn it over on downs. Next drive, Mahoney, this time to his big tight end, that is Jack Laval. Jack gets down to the 40-yard line, but we go to the fourth quarter. Mahoney looking for somebody to throw to, airs it out deep, but it is picked off by Asa Haskins. A nice return by Haskins of the Sharks, rumbling down his own sideline. That sets up the May River O. Then they know what to do from there. Ensuing drive, Sean Mitchell makes it 28-zip. 
May River. They moved to 6 and 0 this evening. They are quite the ball club down in the low, low country. May River, they go on to win 35 8, your final score. Oceanside taking on North Charleston tonight at Charleston Southern. Cougars first drive. QB airs it out, but it is picked off by Miller Hutzler. It's Miller time. Oceanside takes over in plus territory. Ensuing drive, Aiden Manavi into his top target. Will Virgilio looks like seven. Extends the ball over the goal line, but he is marked just short. That leads to this. Mike Jones, who Mike Jones in the jumbo formation, muscles his way in for the score. Landsharks lead seven zip. Then on defense, back then they didn't want him. Now he's hot. They're all on him. Mike Jones with a QB sack. Next OCA possession, a big play. Aiden, big play right here across the middle to his man, main man Virgilio again. Will down inside the Cougars red zone. A few plays later, Manavian to the air one more time. This time to Peyton Shaw, Agent Zero hauls it in as Oceanside doubles their advantage to 14. Oceanside kind of puts it in cruise control in the second half as they stroll to an easy victory, 41-6. Your final score. Burke traveling down Clements Ferry Road to take on Philip Simmons this evening. Scoreless first quarter. Nice game by TJ Walker on the ground right there. Number five trying to take over for KJ Asbury and Sherrod Williams on the ground. Walker finishes what he started right here down the sideline. Strolls and nobody brings him down. He scores. Try for two is good. They go up eight. Nothing. Allen Rouse and the Burke O trying to get something going on the ground. Nice gain right here by Burke. First down Bulldogs. From there, Bulldogs try a wide out pass, but it is picked off by Dariel Porsche right here. Nicely done. As you see, Dariel comes out with the interception. Philip Simmons takes over. Then Porsche goes to work on offense. A big run. Right here from Deuce Deuce 22, looking like Emmett Smith back in the day, the all time leading rusher in the NFL. Then, like his main man, number five, did 22, Darrell Porsche does as well. He scores, he kind of finishes what he started of his own. That makes it 16 0. Philip Simmons. P.S. goes on to win big this evening, 58, your final score. From Thursday night, First Baptist hosting Hilton Head Christian Eagles. First drive, Reed McCullum airs it out deep. Hauled in nicely by Sam Strom. The freshman hauls it in as McCullum airs it out, looking for someone to throw to. Nice gain there by Hilton Head Christian. One play later, McCullum calls his own number, and he strolls in a big gain right there by 1-3. Touchdown, Hilton Head Christian. Then... First FBS offensive snap right here, not a good one. Marie Gibbs had a big game last week. Last night, he can't control the handoff. Ball on the ground. Hilton Head Christian would recover in great field position. Three plays later, like Tim Tebow used to do at Florida, McCullough muscles his way in for his second score in the first three minutes of action. Not First Baptist night on Thursday as they fall. 44-14, your final score. And coming up next, we have a few more scores to show you. Also, our play of the night. Who to come from? Find out when we come right back. And welcome back into the Blitz on to some scores to show you uh, right there. Well, I guess you can't see the scores, but I'll tell you. Buford 23, Collington nothing. Hanahan goes on the road. They fall to Orangeburg. Bro, bro. They fall to Orangeburg. Wilkinson 21-17. Uh, there you go. There's the scores. Woodland. I guess Sam must have heard me in the booth. Woodland. They go to Andrews. They pick up a big win tonight against the Yellow Jackets. Woodland 19, Andrews 6. Some other scores to bring you this evening. Timberland all over Academic Magnet. They blank the Raptors. Wolves 47, Acmag 0. Then we go down to Baptist Hill and the Branchville Ball Club come out with a 16-point victory over Baptist Hill 36-20. Elsewhere in other action this evening, Marlboro County, Georgetown, nothing. Loris, Waccamaw, 40. <laughs> the scores keep going in and out. I apologize. Waccamaw, they fall 40 to 14. Georgetown, they fall tonight also at the hands of Marlboro County. 
Then Lakeview, they get a win on the road. Daryl Kings Club out in Lakeview, the Wild Gators 28, Carver's Bay 6. In the Skeezer ranks, we are still waiting on some scores to show you this evening. As you see, we don't have anything. I apologize again. We will try to have those scores on the Blitz on 2 on the website. Already watch after tonight's show. We go back to Fort D and West Ashley for our play of the night. Who else? Ryan Campbell. Mm -mm, good. The junior running back, one of the best in the low country, one of the best in the state. Right there, makes the move, bounces it to the outside, and he is good as gone. Ryan Campbell strikes up the band for our play of the night. So again, looking forward to next week, we have some big games again. Ashley Ridge and Somerville at McKissick Field should be a big one in the Skeezer ranks after their first loss tonight. Northwood Academy will look, try to get back in the win column against Hammond. The Skyhawks come down to take on Northwood Academy next week. As for tomorrow, some college games on the docket. Wake Forest, Clemson, South Carolina, Alabama at noon. The Citadel at Western Carolina. Charleston Southern at Lindenwood. I'll have you covered tomorrow night at 11. I'll see you then for now. Have a great weekend.